ASH 2015 coverage continues. Thomas Baldrick along with Dr. Serge Verstovsik from the MD Anderson Cancer Center. Your name always, you know, I know you always say, use Dr. V, but I never do. V is easy, I tell right. you. <laughs> Let's talk about your work with uh, PRM 151. First off, what is this? So PRM 151 is a very interesting molecule. It actually represents a recombinant protein, which is called pentraxin 2, or serum albumin protein. I call it SAP. Mm -hmm. It's made in our liver. Everybody has it in their blood, and in normal person it controls differentiation of monocytes, which are blood cells, into fibrocytes. Fibrocytes make up the fibrosis in the bone marrow. So let's say you have a scar, or you have a, a, some kind of damage to the liver or to the lung, then there will be fibrosis. Mm -hmm. And that fibrosis would ma be made up of fibrocytes. They come from monocytes that are blood cells, and sap in the body of the normal person controls that, so you don't get too much. Now we, what you learn is that in myelofibrosis patients, as is in some other conditions, fibrotic conditions, like pulmonary fibrosis, the levels of this protein in blood is very low. SAP is very low, and it is not production problem in the liver, it is consumption in the bone marrow of patients of myelofibrosis because they have malignant process that results in fibrosis. Mm -hmm. So the common sense approach would be then, hey, how about we give it? We made it in a lab, we give it in large quantities, and we give it IV to the patients with myelofibrosis, to counteract fibrosis, maybe diminish it. And then that would result possibly in improvement in the blood cell count, improvement in the red blood cells, platelets, improvement in symptoms. And that was the hypothesis behind the study. Recombinant protein that we all have, but it's very low, possibly because it's used to combat fibrosis in the patients. We give it in high doses, try to diminish fibrosis in patients with myelofibrosis. Now you've done this in combination therapy. How have you gone about so we're talking about a very small study. It's a very okay. small study, 27 patients, pilot study. Half of the patients, 14, were on stable dose of ruxolitinib. That's a JAK inhibitor, which is standard practice to treat patients with malfibrosis with. These patients were, on average, on ruxolitinib for about a year and a half. And we add PRM151 to this regimen. Patients were already on stable dose of ruxolitinib, trying to improve the blood cell count shrink the spleen more, improve the quality of life. The other patients, the other half, were not on any therapy. There were no therapy for these patients. They were very advanced, so single agent part and the combination part. So what have you seen so far in the, in the two differences? The main issue with this type of therapy, which is antifibrotic therapy, is that you really need time. And we have a good experience, for example, after the bone marrow transplant, where you eliminate disease. You need time for fibrosis to go away. Here we are introducing medications which is antifibrotic, diminishing fibrosis over time. And we were very surprised that over time things get better and better. So the point of our presentation today was that half of the patients that continue therapy for a long period of time, 72 weeks, was a pretty decent number of weeks here. We are talking about keeping patients on the study, which is given, by the way, IV once a month. So it's not very cumbersome. This results in a significant improvements in bone marrow fibrosis in majority of the patients by conventional means, looking under the microscope and architecture of the bone marrow. And these patients slowly but steadily improve the red blood cell count, improve the platelets. Some of them have a reduction in the spleen and they feel better. So we do really affect the disease, but it takes time and we need to be patient and persistent. What do you think is most significant of this? Well, the most significant part is not that I am absolutely surprised with this effect, because that has been tested in many preclinical models of fibrosis, lung fibrosis, liver, kidney, and it does work. And also it has been tested in patients with pulmonary fibrosis. So there is some precedent to it. It's comp not completely new. The persistence pays off. But what I also like to highlight is the safety. It is the common protein that we have in our body. We just give it higher. So it's very safe, the patients don't have any major side effects, no suppression of the blood count, no liver toxicity, no neurological toxicity, easy outpatient therapy once a month. You just need to be persistent and wait for things to improve slowly. So Serge, what would you do next in terms of research with this? There are two ways forward that are being considered. One is already in place. We are opening in a number of centers throughout the United States and in Europe as well, the second part of this study where we're going to just test a single agent, just PRM151, on its own, one monthly injections, 
with three different doses in patients with low blood cell count. That would be prerequisite, having low blood cell count because the major benefit is improvement. So we want patients that have low count to improve. In the future, I would hope that we have a combination with the ruxolitinib, the JAK inhibitor, which will be shrinking the spleen, improving quality of life, and the antifibrotic medication would be improving the blood cell count. Very good, sir. Thank you for sharing your news on PRM 151. Best of luck going forward. My pleasure, always. Thank you.